I'm Dr. Orion Taraban, and this is Psychax Better Living Through Psychology. And the topic of today's short talk is frame cannot be shared. So in this episode, I'll be responding to the most common objection to my conceptualization of frame. In my episode, Understanding Frame, I define frame as the world of the relationship. And when it comes to heterosexual relationships, either the man can be in the woman's frame or the woman could be in the man's frame. That's it. Those are the only two options. Now, the most common objection to this formulation goes something like, well, Orion, why can't they be in each other's frame? Like, why can't both parties leave behind their individual frames and enter into a mutually constructed egalitarian frame that serves both people? Like, why isn't that possible, huh? So, I will begin by conceding that that alternative sounds really good. Like, there are a lot of nice and pleasant ideas in that objection. However, a little like socialism, which is often associated with lofty sentiments and noble ideals, this doesn't really work in practice. The truth is that this alternative isn't really possible, and I'm here to give you the three primary reasons why frame cannot be shared. Let's get to it. In the first place, it's important to appreciate that With respect to most of the important decisions that a couple is forced to make, compromise is impossible. For example, if one person wants to live in LA and the other person wants to live in New York, you can't compromise and live in Kansas. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Now, neither person is getting what he or she wants, so what's the point of the relationship? Again, if one person wants kids and the other person doesn't, you can't compromise by having half a child. I'm not yet a father, so I'm not an expert when it comes to children, but I'm pretty sure they don't come in half sizes. You either have one or none at all. So if the parties want different things, if the relationship is to continue, one person will need to concede to the other's frame. However, let's complicate this a little bit more. Let's imagine that we're dealing with two people who want exactly the same things with respect to these big, non-compromisable decisions. They met in LA, but they both want to start a family in New York. They're on the same page. He's not moving into her house. She's not moving into his house. They're going to buy a place together and call it our house. Do you understand? Isn't that possible, Orion? And I would respond, of course, it's possible. People do things like that every day. The issue is that the frame cannot be shared due to the passage of time. Even if we imagine that both people want exactly the same things in exactly the same amount, that will change as the days pass and reality presents itself. People have different interests, preferences, and temperaments. Life doesn't treat everyone equally. What this means is that in practice, when a couple decides to say, buy a house in New York, even if they both want exactly the same thing, in exactly the same amount in the moment they make that decision, one person is actually going to like that house more than the other. One person is actually going to like living in New York more than the other. One person is actually going to benefit more from their mutually constructed lifestyle than the other. So even if there are mutuality in those big decisions, there isn't equality in the subjective experience of the consequences of those decisions. In this hypothetical example, both parties were equal co-creators of this relationship frame, but that's not how it's going to feel with the passage of time. This will inevitably create an imbalance in the relationship, which means that functionally and in practice, one person will increasingly come to live in the other's frame, despite the fact that that frame was mutually constructed. Now, before I go any further, if you're liking what you're hearing, please consider sending this episode to someone who might benefit from its message because it's word of mouth referrals like this that really help to make the channel grow. You can also hit the thanks button. It's in the lower right hand corner beneath this episode and tip me in proportion to the value you feel you've derived from this episode. I don't do big sponsorships or product placements. I rely on your support to keep all this going and I really appreciate it. Thank you. However, Let's now go even one step further than this. Let's imagine that we're dealing with two people who not only want exactly the same things in exactly the same amount, but that they track and correct imbalances in frame as they present themselves over time. 
Like they regularly check in with how the relationship is going and continue to change the frame in order to approximate equality of preference over time. Maybe one person likes New York more than the other, so the other person gets to choose which house they get to buy or something like that. With some creativity and good communication, couldn't these people co-create a mutual frame over time? Even if it's not possible for two people to like exactly the same things in exactly the same amount indefinitely, wouldn't it be possible for two people to create and continuously recreate a frame in which both people experience the same net happiness or satisfaction? And I would respond, go ahead and try. Let me see how it goes. Well, it's theoretically possible to live in this way, the amount of attention and time and energy and money that would need to be spent in order to track the subjective experiences of both parties, in order to ensure that one person isn't being privileged more than the other with respect to their mutual decisions, and to constantly make adjustments to the frame in order to undo that fluctuating privilege would be considerable. It's theoretically possible but it's neither practical nor efficient. Most people don't want to live this way because in order to live this way, you spend a sizable amount of the relationship talking about the relationship, which is probably one of the least interesting things you can do in a relationship. And the more time you spend on the relationship, the less time you have for whatever you got into that relationship to do. So it's time-consuming and inefficient. It also tends to reduce the effectiveness of the relationship. This is why you don't see frame switching in any successful organization or business on the planet. Like if you were on a plane, would you want the pilot and the co-pilot to switch roles halfway to the destination? Like, wouldn't it be more fair and egalitarian if everyone got a chance to be the captain? How would you feel about that as a passenger? One of the reasons why this doesn't happen is that not only is switching inefficient as it takes time and effort to make the change and enter into the new frame, but it's dangerous as well. Every step is an opportunity to misstep. So all other things being equal, we generally want the most parsimonious solution with the fewest moving parts. Just consider what happens every year when daylight saving time ends and we move the clocks back one hour in the middle of the night. The next day, like clockwork, pun intended, traffic accidents go up, absenteeism spikes, and we collectively experience billions of dollars in losses and damages. And that all comes from changing the clocks one hour, once a year. If you're changing frame continuously, then you're not only likely wasting a lot of time, energy, and money, but you're significantly increasing your error rate and the likelihood that you're working toward inferior outcomes. In my opinion, a better alternative is role complementarity. Each party should figure out what he or she does well and specialize. And that, of course, would mean that one person would be better at constructing and maintaining the frame than the other. And this, of course, would dovetail nicely with my dock metaphor in which captains build ships, their lifestyles, and invite passengers on board. See my episode, What is the Sexual Marketplace, for more information. What do you think? Does this fit with your own experience? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've gotten this far, you might as well like this episode and subscribe to this channel. You may also consider becoming a channel member with perks like priority review of comments or booking a paid consultation. As always, thank you for listening.